It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Mariana Buffalino. Hi, Mariana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. So you're here. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're most welcome. So you're here to talk about a book that you wrote called Fallacy uh, Entangled. So it looks like this is going to be a series. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it'll be a three-book series. Okay, and this is the first one. And yeah, my debut. Is the book out? How long has it been out? Um, this month will make a year that it's been officially published. Oh, all right. So it's been out for a little while. Why did you decide to write the book, or why did you decide to write it all? <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting. I've always been a, an avid reader. Um, what happened was actually back in 2021, I was in an accident. Um, I was pedestrian and got hit by a uh, vehicle. And I was in bed for like a few months and reading everything under the sun because there was nothing else I could do. Um, but it was also during the pandemic. So ordering books, because I like having physical books. So ordering books took some time because, again, this pandemic and everything was just at a slower pace. And I don't know, I just laying there, it was kind of my own little stories in my head kind of just kept brewing, brewing, brewing. And I just found myself typing out random scenes. I had no intention of initially writing a book. It was just more of whatever played out in my mind. And it came to the point where I had enough scenes that it could become something. And then I just one day was like, you know, let me put something together, see what I could do. And there you go. And my first novel and uh, that's how it came to be. Okay, you were an avid reader prior to this, yeah? Yeah. Okay. What else have you been doing? I mean, you just started writing. Did you have a career before that, doing something else? Yes, I'm a, a paralegal, actually. So um, I have that as my full-time job. Um, I have a side company as well that caters to notaries. Uh, and now I do writing as well now. Okay. Uh, I got married in 2021, and I just have just had a baby actually two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago! Wow! Congratulations! I'm yeah, <laughs> so I'm a new mama. Did you get a boy or a girl? It's a boy. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, that'll keep you busy. I'm sure he will. Yes, <laughs> he's a good baby though. So I thank God. Well, so good baby. What does that mean? Means he doesn't cry too much at three um, in the morning. He, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He honestly, honestly, it's just when he's really hungry, he gets he's hangry, which he gets from me. I'll admit that. <laughs> um, he cries when he's hungry or wants his diaper changed. Other than that, he's just there. Oh well, that's great. So that's can't cool. complain. Yeah, I got lucky. <laughs> All right. So tell us about the book. Give us a, a synopsis of the story. So the book is a mafia romance and um it dives into a, the mafia world but it um the female character is aria she grows up in the lifestyle but decides to just branch off onto her own and cut ties off with her family um then her twin brother calls her back about 12 years later to let her know that their father had passed and in going back home, she gets pulled back into the lifestyle that she's run away from for so long. And uh, the book dives into her, you know, struggling and torn between uh, the lifestyle that she grew up and has been in half her life versus the world that she created for herself. She's very successful on her own and she has her own life and Basically, the book is her being torn between the two worlds. Uh, she has two love interests, 
that are, you know, one from one world, one from another. And that just makes it even harder for her to decide what she wants to do. Okay. For some reason, while you were describing the book, that show uh, Growing Up Gaudy came to mind. Is it anything like that? I mean, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It definitely has that. It's not your typical mafia trope type of book, right? It's not like this, oh, this female character comes across this made man and, you know, he's like this painted in a particular typical way that mafia books, romance books depicts them. It's very more real in the sense of, you know, they are who they are, but they also live double lives, right? Like, so they are an organized crime, but when they're home, they're home. They're family men. So you also get a glimpse of that split lifestyle as well. Okay. Well, I was just trying to think of that show. I mean, that was kind of a long time ago, and I think she's passed away already, right? Victoria Gotti? Um, I don't think so. You don't I think don't so? Okay. Her I, I, passing away. Okay. I can't quite remember, but I mean, she was the granddaughter of John Gotti, right? Or the daughter? I believe she was the daughter. Okay. She but was she, the daughter, yeah. But she wasn't... I remember that show. I used to watch it. <laughs> but she wasn't actually... I mean, he was the mafia guy, right? Not her. But I think she also married someone who was also in the lifestyle. Oh, okay. So the father of, of the boys was... Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. like, she she was the daughter of John Gotti, but she also married into... Like, she married someone who was also in the lifestyle. Okay, I get it. I get it. It's funny, you know, this must be Mafia Week, because I just interviewed a guy named Scott Hoffman who, wa- whose father was consigliere or something to uh, the Giancana family in Chicago. And he talked all about... Uh, the Las Vegas connection and I mean this is going back into the like the 1940s 50s but uh, very interesting and he just wrote a book as well but I think his is more of a kind of a autobiography of his life growing Mm -hmm. up in that sort of lifestyle yeah I find that it's all very interesting because you know like I said they're they're men in organized crime, so, like, in the eyes of, like, a legal aspect, they're bad people, but when you look at it from a family aspect, you know, even if the family knows that they may or may not be doing something legitimate, they, it's different. It, they don't see them in that light. So that is, like, a clear message that comes across the storyline because, you know, sure, she knows her family isn't in the best light but she doesn't see that part of them she sees them oh as my brother as my father as you know whoever is around her and i think that's the most interesting part being in part of that lifestyle right like you, you it's, you're living a double life essentially about true and also i mean hollywood has really glamorized the mafia families and with all of the various movies godfather was probably the first major one. Uh, and then all of the Absolutely. Martin Scorsese films that came out. But there was a certain, like, if you look at those guys, the wise guys, and and you look at, you know, sort of these street criminals who just go bust a shop or rob a Seven Eleven or something like that, there's not, I hate to use this term, but there's no class to it. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I agree. It's like, it's like, uh, so like, well strategized. It's like, so well orchestrated. You know, that's also why I find it so interesting. It's just different. Like you said, it's not just go in and, you know, guns are blazing and whatever is going on. It's so it's just orchestrated so differently. It's almost, it sounds weird to say it, but it's almost like poetic where it's just, it's just, different yeah that's a good way to put it and you know also they never killed anybody who wasn't in the group do you know i mean they didn't kill innocent people they didn't shoot people on the street who were just minding their own business and if somebody got whacked it was because they broke the rules and they knew that the rules you know they knew the rules when they went in it's a i don't know 
it's it's funny to talk about crime in a glamorous light, but <laughs> there was a certain <laughs> sense of that with with those guys, you know. Yeah, well, you see it, you know. I guess I mean I call them made men. They are. I mean, people refer to them as made men, um, but they don't sit there and talk about their experience like that, right? So you're getting it from a one sided perspective you're getting it from you know law enforcement and what they see right so they see guys who were doing illegal things and and flaunting money and you know they could buy whatever they want because they have all this money and cash and you know that's how hollywood did glamorize it where it's like oh they had all this great stuff and it wasn't really like that <laughs> you know yeah now, are any of the characters in your book, are these like composites of people you might have met during your life? No, it's all fiction. All fiction. All okay. from my mind with that with that understanding of, you know, that lifestyle in the sense of split world. Okay. You know, I don't know if you remember the show Mob Wives. No, I, I remember the title, but I never watched it. So it was an MTV show that aired a few years ago, um, some time ago, actually. Uh, And it was basically the wives or girlfriends of made men and their their life in general. And that's where I really got the um, idea from was that they all spoke about their brothers, fathers, uncles, cousins who were not as criminals. They never looked at them as criminals, um, whether they they knew what was going on or not. They always saw them as the loving person, right? Like they just were just these loving people to them. And that's just not how law enforcement saw them, right? They didn't see that side. So that's where really that idea came from, that I, and I just rolled with it. So you said your book's been out for about a year. Are you getting good reviews? So far, no bad reviews. I've been getting really uh, positive feedback, which is, you know, nice it being my first novel, being, you know, when you publish like your own work of art, it is, you know, all the feels, right? It's exciting, but terrifying at the same time, because it's so personal, even though there's nothing personal in the book that relates to my life. It's just, it came from my mind. I typed it out. It's in a book, and now other people are reading it. And, you know, you never know what people are going to say, but so far it's been pretty positive. All right, well, that's good. And this is a series, you said. Do you know how many books uh, are going to be in this series? So the book will have, it will be three books. So it will be Fallacy, Entangled is the first book, and then there will be two more. Book two does come out next year. And then I do have two spin-off books that can be read as standalone, but they will involve characters um, in the series and kind of dive into more of their background. Uh, are you doing anything with this series in terms of shopping it for uh, television or movies or anything like that? Do you have any interest in that? Uh, if someone picked it up for uh, a show or a movie, that'd be amazing. You wouldn't complain, um, right? No. They, I, <laughs> what? I said you wouldn't complain if they did that, right? No, I wouldn't complain at all. That'd be an honor, actually. That'd be great. Okay. Well, I don't know. It some has, people... It has everything. Some people are, are actively sort of shopping that around, and some people are not, so I didn't know if you were... if that's where you wanted to go with this or not eventually down the line i think i just want the series done first and then once book three is officially out i think i would take more of that initiative in searching for someone who would pick it up so you self-published this right yes i did it on my own how, how was that uh process oh that was a roller coaster <laughs> um it pro and con doing self-publishing and the traditional publishing and basically you have to think about what you want the, your outcome to be. And for me, I wanted it to be uh, my work. I wanted to go on my timeline. And I, that's why I decided to self-publish. Uh, but there are so many different parts. You, you're not just writing the book. You're, you have to format it. You have to create a cover. You have to, there's just so many different steps that you need to do. But if you just 
do your research and know what needs to get done, it's all fairly simple to do on your own. Well, I think with self-publishing, yes, you've got to do all the work, but also you get complete control. I've, I've heard people who have self-published who said they would never go with a traditional publisher just because they mm-hmm. like having a, the control over their work. Right. I mean, the only positive thing that would be through a traditional publisher is that they do the marketing for you because the marketing is the hardest part. You know, putting it all together, publishing it yourself, fairly easy. It's the marketing that, uh, yeah. you know, you really have to, that's the toughest part. Well, there's so much stuff out you know, there. That. You know, there's so much stuff out there that getting your head above the waterline is really the trick. You know, I don't have a magic formula for that. And <laughs> everybody's kind of in the same boat. Social whether, media. Yeah, whether you're an author Social or media, whether... Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, social media in general has, has been... There's, you know, a whole community of people who read books and people who review books who, you know, you could reach out and be like, hey, do you, can I send you my book for you to read and review on your platform? Um, and there's so there's just so many people. So if you know how to work social media, it, that's like your good start. And there have been authors who've, you know, who've been writing for years and they jump on social media and all of a sudden they've blown up to bestsellers. So social, social media really is uh, a friend. Well, Marianne, I think on that we're going to wind this down. Thank you so much for coming on the show. The book is called Fallacy, and Entangled is the first book in the series. Uh, do you have a website? or? Yeah, uh, my website is authormarianabuffalino.com. I'm currently revamping it, but it should be um, up and running by November. Um, I have Instagram and TikTok. You could find me at Author Mariana Buffalino on either one. Um, and you could find me, follow me, interact with me. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It was nice meeting you, nice talking to you, and best of luck with the book series. Hope it does well. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. 